Hi, I'm Liz Nedden. Let's have a look at time series and doing some comparisons. So the key thing is that we first need to identify is there another relevant variable in the data set that can be compared. So apples and apples, green apples, red apples, I can compare them. They're both talking about the same thing. Whereas if I'm talking about lemons and oranges, they're different things. And so if I don't have data that's comparable or relevant and connected, then don't bother. So for example, I've got my sea ice data here and I've drawn a graph now comparing the Antarctic with the Arctic. Now the reason I've drawn them on the same set of axes is that's a really good way for us to visually compare them. And as I can see on this graph, there's a number of different things I want to compare. So think about our trend. Think about our seasonality and think about the variation. Okay, those are our three big features and we want to be able to discuss those and compare them. So one of the things I see is if I look at the brown, that solid brown trend line through the middle versus the solid blue trend line through the middle, one of them is reducing much more than the other. And so the blue line is our Arctic and so I notice that the blue line is going down much quicker than the brown one. So that's what I want to say, is that I notice the surface area of sea ice in the Arctic is showing a more pronounced decrease, or a much bigger decrease is being shown than in Antarctica. And this is where I would jump onto our good friend Google and do some research to try and explain why is there a bigger reduction a quicker reduction over the same period of time in the Arctic because from the beginning of the data in 1990 they were both at very very similar levels whereas by the end of it there is a much bigger difference between the values. So this is where I would want to go and find out why might there be a bigger difference, what's different about the Arctic than the Antarctic. Comparing variation, so what I think about now is if I draw a line hitting the top points together and the bottom points together, there's my Antarctic. Now if I do the same thing but to the Arctic, then there's my top points and there's my bottom points. And I'm hoping that you've noticed that the, uh, Antarc the Arctic has much narrower variation in the temperatures than the Arctic. So if I'm looking at the Arctic, there is much wider variation in the amount of surface area of sea ice. Okay, and so that's one thing that I want to compare. So I've said that there's, I notice there's more variation in the surface area of sea ice in Antarctica than in the Arctic. And this is where I need to go to Google and look up and see if I can find reasoning why that might be. The next thing I want to do is think about that trend, but in more detail. So what I've done here is I've got the Arctic and the Antarctic graphs separately. And you'll notice it's harder to compare them when you've got them separately than if we had them on the same graph like I did here. That's a much better way to compare when you're on the same set of axis. But the reason I've done them separately is so that I can identify the start and end points more accurately. They kind of overlap a lot if they're on the same axis. So I need to know, first of all, the Arctic is decreasing and it's going from um, Jan to um, oh, not 1990 and that's around 11.7 million cubic square centimetres and that has decreased by December 2018, oh no, year 2018, and that's gone down to 10.3 million. And equally for the Antarctic, I've got those values. So that's what I'm saying, is that January 2009, the average surface area of sea ice in the Arctic was around 11.7 million square kilometres. And this decreased to about 10.3 million square kilometres, and I should be saying by December 2018. Over the same period, 
the surface area of sea ice in Antarctic has dropped from 11.4 million down to 11.1 million square kilometres. So we can see that it's reduced much more in the Arctic than in the Antarctic for that same period of time. Now I would also go on further, compare, calculate the gradients of both um, and talk about how one has a much bigger or smaller gradient and if, if the data was appropriate I would do a piecewise function. In this case I wouldn't, I would simply look at calculating the gradients and making a more specific comparison. Now let's have a look at seasonality. So to compare seasonality, I've got my graph here, both data on the same axis. And so the brown one is our Antarctic and the blue one is our Arctic. So what we want to notice is that in February it's low in Antarctic and March tends to be the highest for the Arctic. So the Arctic has its peak in the third month, which is March, whereas in the Antarctic um, its trough was in Feb. For the Arctic, its trough is in September, okay, it's month nine, is, is the peak for Arctic, um, so Antarctic, so Antarctic has its peak in September and the Arctic has its trough in September. So we can see there that the seasons are opposite from each other. And then if we think about why that is, well I know from Map of the World, the Antarctic's down the bottom and the Arctic's at the top. So if we think about a north versus south, half of the world, then when we're in winter, they're in summer and vice versa. So that's what I'm going to tell us about. So I notice that the pattern in the Arctic is opposite that of the Antarctic. And that's likely, and that will be because of the different seasons in the southern versus the northern hemisphere. Um, so then I will go on to interpret the actual peak and troughs values. So I've already done the Antarctic ones previously. So I would now add on to that and interpret the Arctic's one and then compare that difference.